We're going to talk first about why building chords um, is such an effective and easy way to, uh, to get to uh, some good jazz comping. Um, I first want to tell a little, a little bit of history about myself and, uh, and how I came to this approach um, through working with students, through you know, playing hundreds of gigs myself, and, uh, and through observing uh, the history of a lot of uh, the, great, the great jazz guitarists. Um, I was a very dedicated young student, um, pretty, uh, pretty geeky, and I remember spending a whole summer uh, nothing but, uh, but learning out of this cool old chord book I had from the 50s. Um, I think it was the Ronnie Lee chord book, and it, it, it had all the, the jazz chords that I, that I, I loved. And, uh, you know, it had these typical chords that, that you know. Uh, let me show you a couple of them here, like that, um, that big old G13 chord. You know, and then it had the C9 and the C13. I thought these were the coolest things, you know, and then it had like um, the big old major seven chord. And of course, the major six chord. And I remember practicing these uh, a great deal um, and getting on my first gigs and, uh, and sure enough, playing all those big chords. And uh, I think um, one of the first gigs I, I played, played was with a Brazilian band. And, and I was playing this great bossa nova, and I can show you here <laughs> the kind of chords I was playing. I thought I was, I was uh, you know, the cat's meow. So I was playing this here, I was going like... Um, kind of thing, you know, which actually does sound kind of cool if I'm playing, you know, with a singer, just guitar and voice or something. But, you know, I mean, after I got fired after like one gig or two gigs, because first the bass player kept looking at me with that sour expression on his face, you know, you know, what are you doing playing all those bass notes? And then, and the piano player was, why are you playing all those ninths and thirteenths? And, and so slowly I began to say, oh, wow, I can't play those bass notes. So I would, you know, move my finger away from the bass notes and then, oh, I can't play those top notes. And after a while, there I was playing just a couple of notes and everybody had a smile on their face. Um, so I began to realize that, um, in fact, those couple of notes were the essent essential elements I needed. And, um, you know, most of us guitar players learn chords based on the root note on the low E string, or then eventually the root note on the A string. But ultimately, I began to realize that those notes weren't so important. It was the notes uh, on, the, on the middle strings, what we want to call the guide tones or color tones, that were so important. Um, and in fact, looking at the history of the music, you begin to find that all of the great guitarists, you know, this isn't just how I play. Um, we look at um, the comping of Wes, of Grant Green, of Kenny Burrell, of Jim Hall. And in many cases, um, almost all cases, uh, you find that this emphasis on just the two notes initially is where their comping starts. And so we're going to start by giving a few examples of how these two notes create a great comping sound. 